All right, this is going to be a quick uh, video tutorial on the different sections of the Korg MS 2000 slash 2000R uh, slash B slash BR. Um, basically, I got this a while back, and uh, here recently I turned a knob. It didn't do what I thought it should do, and then I thought I should read the manual. So I read the manual, and there's not a lot on this scent. There's a couple of good demos for sure, uh, but there's not a lot on actually how to use it, especially the mod sequencer, which is the reason I bought it. So, uh, we're just going to go through the sections uh, very quickly, and then uh, maybe build a patch, see what we can do. Alright, uh, you've got all your inputs and outputs across the top, has full size MIDI, in, out, and through, uh, stereo out, it's got a uh, two line ends uh, with a switch next to it, one to switch uh, line in or mic in, uh, because it also functions as a vocoder. Uh, power there. Uh, you've got your audio in uh, level controls here with LED that go from green to yellow to red indicating uh, the level coming in or the level you've adjusted it to. You've got a combo power switch uh, volume knob here. Uh, headphones, I don't know if that's there on the full size uh, the keyboards. Got a keyboard switch which allows these uh, buttons across the bottom. You can see this one is marked with a C. That would uh, presumably be middle C. And then you've got your black keys with uh, white rings around your white keys. Um, let's come back up here. You've got oscillator 1 and 2 in the oscillator section. Oscillator 1 is more in-depth than oscillator 2. You've got four basic waveforms here. Uh, ramp, uh, square, triangle, and sine wave. And then on the other side, you've got four more. Voxwave, DWGS, which is a collection of uh, uh, digital waveforms that you can cycle through. I believe there's 64 of them. You've got a noise source, and then you can pump audio in from your audio in uh, inputs. At the bottom, uh, you've got two control knobs. You would assume that these control pitch like they do on oscillator 2, in fact, they don't. Uh, they do different things depending on what selection you have here. Uh, usually, one controls the uh, LFO1 input to pitch, the intensity, and the other one is a wave shape modifier, uh, like pulse width. And uh, on the sine wave, you have cross modulation. So it'll cross modulate from oscillator 2, even if oscillator 2 is down in the mixer. Uh, so on the oscillator 2, you've got three basic waveforms, a ramp, square, and triangle. You do have two pitch controls. It says semitone and tune, um, but they actually... So four semitones, and then 63, whatever increment that is. Uh, I don't believe it's sense because they, uh, they tune to the same thing at full clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, then also in oscillator 2's section you have an OSC mod uh, which will turn on ring modulation, sync, uh, oscillator sync between 1 and 2 or both. So that's kind of cool. Uh, next in the mixer section you've got oscillator 1 level control 2 and a noise source here is white noise. Uh, so in effect you have two noise sources, one from oscillator 1 and two in the mixer section. Uh, next up, you've got the filter section, which is standard. Cutoff, resonance, uh, envelope 1 intensity, which is plus and minus, and keyboard tracking, which is plus and minus. Uh, you've got a filter type selector switch here. Uh, 24 dB low pass, 12 dB low pass, and then 12 uh, dB for band pass and high pass. Uh, next up, you've got the amp section. Uh, you've got overall level, you've got pan, uh, and you've got EG2 or gate uh, switch here. And then you've got a weird distortion button uh, that sounds horrible, but sometimes it's just what you need. Uh, I don't know why this isn't over in the effects section, but you know. Uh, next up, you've got the arpeggiator section. You've got a tempo knob if your machine is set to uh, internal tempo control this will affect the tempo uh, mine is set to auto so right now it's adjusting the tempo rate uh, 
but when I put a clock in for my NPC, it overrides this and, you know, this will become basically do nothing. Uh, in the arpeggiator section, also you've got a gate length, uh, you've got an on off switch, you've got a latch to latch it on, uh, you've got a range, you can do up to four octaves, uh, four octave arpeggiation, and then you've got a type, standard, up, down, alt one, alt two, random and trigger. Uh, the difference between alt one and alt two is inclusive and exclusive. It'll say you've got a three, three note, uh, three note chord as being arpeggiated, it'll go one, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one. And the other alt will go one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, if that makes sense. So uh, then you've got your menu section. Uh, there aren't a lot of menus that you really need to get into. A few things like syncing uh, the LFOs to tempo and subdividing it down, things like that. Almost everything else, though, has a knob which is great. Uh, so we did the keyboard uh, section, or the keyboard switch. You've got a timbre select switch. Uh, they call this bitembral, and technically I guess it is, uh, but not between patches like most of their instruments. You can set it up to layer or split, two separate, you know, patches, but you can't address, you can't take a patch you've already created and split it with another patch you've already created. You have to create both patches in one program and then, you know, using the menu, divide the voices down. It is only four note uh, polyphonic, so you can divide it one to three, two to two, or three to one. Uh, and you would use that to select timbre one, timbre two. Uh, next, you've got some mod sequencer control on and off, and then record. Uh, and we'll hit that in a little more depth. Uh, next, you've got portamento, you know, portamento control. Uh, you've got EG filter one, and this is for uh, our envelope generator ones for the filter, ADSR, and then EG two is for amp. It's ADSR as well. You've got two LFOs. Uh, one and two. One is uh, pre-routed to oscillator one pitch. Uh, you can also use it for other things in the virtual patch bay. You've got three waveforms, ramp, square, uh, triangle, and then a sample and hold. On the other side, you've got ramp, square, and sine, uh, and sample and hold. In the effects section, oh, and rate knobs to control the rate, and that's free running or... Uh, or sync to key and sync to tempo and subdivide it down uh, to a number of different time signatures. Uh, in the effects section, you've got a selector switch. You've got mod and delay. Under mod, you've got uh, four or five, I think, uh, different effects such as chorus, flanger, um, things of that nature. And then you've got delay, which will do a stereo delay, ping pong delay, uh, and you change that in the menu. But then you've got speed and depth for your mod effects and then you've got time and feedback for your delay effects. Uh, next up we've got a virtual patch bay and this is pretty cool you can you can do a lot even though you can't really do a lot. Uh, it doesn't have you know 10,000 sources and destinations but you do get your envelopes, your LFOs, velocity, keyboard tracking, uh, two MIDI ends and you can patch those out the destinations are pitch Oscillator 2 pitch, oscillator 1 control 1, which again does a wave shape, is a wave shape modifier, uh, a noise level, and then some filter stuff, cutoff, uh, overall amp level, a pan, and LFO 2 frequency. So LFO 1 can control the frequency of LFO 2, which is pretty cool. And you get four slots, uh, plus and minus on that. Uh, and then down the big one, uh, your mod sequencer. You get a channel select switch here on the end. You have three different sequences of mod select. When this is on, or actually it doesn't even have to be on. When this is selected, these knobs do not control uh, your envelopes or LFOs or virtual patch bay. These are basically like the old style analog 
uh, controls for the mod sequence or for whatever you're uh, affecting. So at the bottom you've got a bank and octave. You can go up and down uh, for bank and when the keyboard button is pressed these are octave control for the uh, for the keys when they're functioning as keys. So uh, that's all the parts. Let's get into, uh, let's actually use the, let's build a patch. I had a phone call so sorry for the jump there. Uh, basically what we're going to do is uh, click the edit button. Uh, we're going to initialize this first program. Yes, yes. Uh, and we're going to make a pad using, you know, what you're going to need to make a pad. So let's start uh, initial sound. Okay, let's bring in oscillator 2. bass sound. Let's uh let's add some movement. Let's use our virtual patch here to select patch one. Uh LFO one, which is fine. Let's uh let's control the cutoff with that. is very very digital but uh, it is quite harsh yet harmonic and musical especially once you crank the, I mean crank the resonance up this does self oscillate so you can use it as a uh, a third oscillator if you crank the resonance and then turn on the keyboard tracking uh, let's see what else we can add let's uh I'm recording in mono right now so there's no there's no reason to put uh stereo effect on it, but we can turn on uh, some some effects like a chorus or an ensemble. There we go. Let's, uh, let's break out the mod sequencer. Uh, I'm going to go to click it once, and that'll give us sequence one <clears throat> uh, lit up. And now all of these knobs don't control anything up here. They only control values uh, with center being zero. <clears throat> so plus and minus on all of the other controls. There's two ways to do it. Uh, when I initially select the sequence, uh, our menu jumps to uh, the first control knob. Uh, what are the knobs for sequence one adjusting and it's set to pitch so we can we can run with that that's fine now we can do it manually so I can zero and they're all default by zero once you move a middle jump and we'll dial something in here and one one note Let's turn it on. You can see it's jumping through that pretty quick. Uh, just for the sake of time and having to adjust all these knobs, I'm going to page down to sequence or common. Last step, we're going to make this a four step modulation sequence, which will effectively run to four and then recycle 
depending on how, you know, either forward, backward, or back and forth. Alright, so let's, now that we've done that, that's still a bit fast uh, for our slow evolving pad. So let's cursor over, let's see what it sounds like. That's pretty cool. We'll keep that run mode loop or one shot. We're going to keep it in a loop because we want it to keep running. Now we're at the resolution. Let's see how fast that's going. And let's crank it down. Now we can hear that on the hits, it's very abrupt. That's because it is in step mode. We do not want it in step mode, we want it in smooth mode. So we'll come over here to sequencer 1, and this can be done independently uh, for each of the three. Switch it over to smooth, and... Yeah, now, we're getting, now we're getting somewhere. I'm going to change these down just a little bit, because... Pretty intense. Uh, so, ah, we don't want to change the pitch. Let's come up here and we can cycle through uh, a number of different controls. Let's see. Let's do cutoff. You know what? Let's do resonance. Let's get some uh, some harmonics in there. And this one one key, one note press, uh, essentially one voice. So let's come over here to uh, let's turn our sequencer off, which is where you make all your problems. You leave it on, you start adjusting something for an LFO speed, and next thing you know, your step is all wonky. Uh, so let's uh, let's come over here to patch four. Let's route LFO two to the amp. Let's get a tremolo effect going. That's cool. Let's let's modulate that. So we've got our. That's about as intense as we want it. You know the LFO to be affecting. Let's modulate the LFO speed with our mod sequencer. So let's go to sequencer two. Uh, knob is none. Let's get to. LFO2 frequency. Alright, so. Set them all at zero. That's going to keep it where we have it. So. Let's take this off of uh, alternate. Let's uh, we want step. Oh, that's going to be in uh, sequencer common. Yeah, let's let's just get that uh, just a forward. Of course, we could uh, create, we could make the last step, let's go eight, so now we have,
we go. Uh, it's something. I don't know if it's usable, but it's something. And we didn't even hit everything. I mean, we didn't change wave forms off of an initialized patch. Uh, we didn't even hit all the areas. Just as a quick demonstration, I'm going to hit a chord. You hear what the distortion does. You know, whatever. Uh, let's initialize the patch again. Completed. All right. I'm going to change this to mono. There we go, unison. That's going to stack all four voices uh, in a monophonic mode and detune them. And you can adjust the, de the detune on them, but that sounds okay. Okay, so we've got that going. Uh, I think we're done here. Uh, filter, we are going to modulate the filter with the mod sequencer. Sounds pretty creamy. Uh, we're good there. Let's uh, let's jump straight into the. You know what? Yeah, let's jump straight into the mod sequencer. Uh, we don't want to adjust pitch. Let's adjust uh, cutoff. For you know what? Let's record it. So when I press record, it's going to start going. And let's turn the tempo down. Try to catch it right on the one, and I'm going to whap it up and pull it back down. And as soon as record goes off, that means it's got your thing, uh, your sequence uh, recorded in. So we can see, if we tweak any one of these knobs, it's going to give us the value of where this knob was at at the point it did that. And again, uh, like before, this is in this is in step mode. If we smoothed it out, it would sound like this. In step mode, we uh, we get a gate that gated effect, which sounds pretty good. You know what else would sound good on that? A delay. So let's add a delay. Uh, this is speed, and this is feedback. We could sync this to uh, our clock if we had drums going, uh, which, you know, I'm going to get over on the MPC real quick. Uh, we're going to go new sequence. Let's go down to track one. Let's do this quickly. Get some drums going so you can hear uh, how the uh, how everything can be synced up. Okay, that's good. All right, it's voiceover time because the microphone on my camera was picking up the drums, and I continued to talk through it. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to hear through the uh, flammy, crappy drums. So I'm going to try to keep up on this voiceover. Alright, so we've got drums going. Back on the uh, MS-2000. Let me hit a note here. You can see that this is synced up uh, now with the clock coming from the MPC. sequences are not selected so I'm going to tweak the delay and we're gonna cursor over to tempo sync and put it on and now our sync now we're synced up and we can change resolution on that 
uh, we're going to mute the drums. Uh, it's still running, though, so the clock is still coming in. Uh, so we can kind of test these out. And these go all the way down to uh, a delay per bar. Uh, I think it sounded good on eighth note, an eighth note delay. So let's leave it there. Unmute the drums. Let's uh, change control one, which remember is uh, like pulse width <laughs> on the square wave. Uh, so let's set up let's set up patch two LFO two. Set that to oscillator one, control one. LFO two, let's crank it up. We managed to hit a sweet spot there because it's not synced up to the clock, but it's about to be. So let's do that. We've got LFO two selected, uh, tempo sync to on. Resolve to notes, so let's slow it down. That's pretty warbly. Let's find something close. Now, normally I would have just left it in the sweet spot, but you know, because we're syncing things up and actually trying to use the machine, this is how you would do it. Sounds good about right there. So, hopefully, uh, this demo has. Uh, explained a bunch of things. We didn't use the arpeggiator much. Uh, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. If you can follow this, you should be able to handle that. Uh, so I hope it helps some people out and going over all the sections and how to use a mod sequencer. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks.